Hiya, my name is Johnny and welcome back to my TR6 restoration channel. In the last episode I uh, finished off some of the cosmetic work like paint in the back panel and stone chipping the sills. Today I'm going to put on the rear lights, um, possibly the front lights and hopefully during the week fit the complete interior. Now before I fit these lights I am going to need to change these rubber gaskets. I've bought all new ones. You've got these thick ones which go between the body and the light and then you've also got these thinner ones which go between the light and the casing of the light. And these are full up of this um, crud, I don't know what you call it anyway, they've obviously had some kind of leak and rather than changing the rubbers they've just filled it up with this horrible stuff, which I'm going to have to persevere with and be rid of. This is like a windscreen sealer, the stuff that never actually sets off or goes hard. Now that I've got all the, or the majority of the crud off, I'm just going to use a bit of thinners to really clean it up behind here. This breaks it that right down and uh, then gives me a nice sort of clean surface to make the new gasket to because if there are any sort of imperfections that will create um, an area where the rain can drip back into besides that I want the back of the light which is never going to be seen to be spotless or as spotless as I can get it that's really more the reason and a bit of over spray here from whoever sprayed the car last which I don't like so more or less the rear of the light now has been cleaned up to get it as good as it's gonna look. As I said, it never gets seen, but it's just satisfying knowing that you're putting everything back cleaner than when you took it off. And that's uh, more to do with my OCD than anything else. Next thing I wanna do is take the lenses off so that I can replace those gaskets at the same time I'll be able to clean behind these lenses as well where a bit of dust was collected so I'll make them look a bit brighter So I've just sorted out some new nuts and washers for it. Uh, the old ones are fine but just a bit rusty and horrible. So what happens next is this piece goes on there, that piece will go like that and the whole unit gets bolted onto the body. So that's what we'll do next. That's one light done. I've just got to fit the other one and then connect them up. So now that the backlights are on, I've tried connecting them. I'm using my wiring diagram to work out where everything goes. And uh, I'm getting some little bits and pieces not working. So I thought I'd just divert my attention for a little while and fit 
these which are a pair of brand new headlights now I did have headlights that were in good condition although you know very old but I broke one of them so I had to buy a new pair which is going to look nicer anyway because the glass on a new pair of headlights is going to be so much more I can get them out yeah that that will look a lot better on a car that's been resprayed and all the engine bay is so nice and everything else why not have a brand new headlight anyway like they cost me 60 quid odd something like that and that's just gonna add to the looks of the car so that's what we're gonna do next now I've already fitted on these um, I don't know what you call them headlight holders whatever um, but once I decided that I was going to order new headlights I decided to order a new packet of um, headlight adjusters and springs not that there was anything wrong with the old ones it's just that the new ones will be uh, fresh and easy to adjust and whatnot so I'm going to undo these put these on and then pop headlights in right I've set this in obviously the uh, the lights are not going to be very well aligned but luckily enough I'm in an MOT station here so at some point I can adjust them or rather I'll get my brother to adjust them for me right, I'll put the bezel on even though I know that they've got to come off again for the headlight adjustment but yeah I don't even know how this goes on okay so there looks like there should be some sort of a retaining clip on my bezel which is in really good condition but because that retaining clip holding on I'm not going to go and buy a new bezel because of that I'll come up with a solution for now that will do one headlight on I'll just finish off the other one okay it's Monday it's now coming up to half past two I've spent the last few hours of the day cleaning up the interior of the car got getting rid of every last bit of carpet that was in there and now cleaning it with a panel wipe because what I'm about to do is add soundproofing to it something I wasn't going to do but I watched um, one of Ellen's videos Ellen's Rusty Beauty's really really good channel uh, he did his one with that and I thought you know it almost makes sense because it gives a good basis for you to glue down the carpet on as well so that's what I'm about to do now I bought this off of eBay, um, had really really good reviews, took quite a few sheets here, I think it's meant to cover about two square metres, so I'll go as far as I can with it, and um, there's a lot, of the, a lot of the car there has got sound deadening on there in any case, but what I'll do is uh, use this to go wherever I can and if I've, if I've got left over I'll go over their existing one too. So first of all I've got to look at where I can put these panels and where, where's or how is the best way I'm going to get good fit on them. Uh, it does recommend that you make templates uh, and then use the templates to cut this stuff but I think for the most part I'm just going to go with it because I know that that bit can go in there and then I'll put another bit behind there and then I'll do all the little infills afterwards. Yes, it does say you should use this stuff or the car should be at 15 degrees. Well, it's a, a lot colder than that outside today. So, um, 
I'm going to have to get the blow lamp on this to get it shaped. Make sure that it glues down properly. So that's one sheet in and now I'll go along and add this one there next to it and as I say I can always cut some other strips of them to add them in afterwards at the same time making sure I know where my uh, seat frame bolts are going to what I think I'll do is put a couple of bolts in place and then as I lay down the sound bed then I'll see where these are and just get the little knife and cut around them well, that took me about an hour and a half to do that little bit and that's as far as I got with the sound deadening I thought it was going to go further than what it did but nevertheless the floor pans are covered a little bit up there I've got uh, some in there in front of the uh, bulkhead the same as on that side so that's a good basis to lay the carpet on right I'm uh, back here today uh, it's Tuesday so what you've just seen was what I did yesterday which was line the floor pan with the sanded uh, gear and today I'm back and they have been looking forward to for quite a while which is hopefully to begin fitting the carpet and before I do that what I'm going to do is put underlay down and luckily enough I had a bit of underlay spare from when I uh, refurbished the flat which some of you might watch those boring videos or not anyway I've got a load of this stuff uh, which is like a foam underlay and I thought I could get away with not using it but I thought just make it a little bit more nice a bit more quiet and a little bit more luxurious with this stuff so I'm going to line as much as I can with what I've got of this which is a few odd scraps and uh, get on with that and then afterwards start putting the carpet in I'd have never thought of using this stuff it was only because I had some of this left over from, as I say, from the refurbishment that I've just done. So now I'll just carry on and do as much as this uh, as I can with the amount of underlay that I've got. Right, it's a few hours later, I've had a lot of distractions, um, but I've been getting on with it. and. I've managed to stretch the material out as far as I possibly could and this is where I'm up to. I've managed to cover the whole floor pan, the uh, transmission tunnel and even the area behind the seats here as well. It got to the point where I was having to cut little bits and pieces out and glue them together like jigsaw puzzles to make this work but this is so much nicer than the old whatever they used to have with the horse hair type of matting this this is much better the great stuff about this um, carpet underlay is that you can mold it to make it shape any way you want to it can contract or expand and um, <coughs> makes it really easy to work with and that combined with the sound that wow. this is going to make this a really quiet cockpit you can see how well it molds around this which is a single piece all in one go and just stretched and fitted and shrunk wherever it needs to to go around this so now that I've done this I'm ready to start installing carpet but before the carpets I've got panels like this now I made this at home um, I've made all the interior panels at home this is actually made out of vinyl um, hoping it's going to fit I went by the pattern of the old one which was slightly stretched anyway but I think I'll be able to get a good gluing on that 
trim it down a little bit and that should go on really nicely. So there's the one side done and that's turned out really well. I'm, I'm very happy with my uh, efforts on that. So I'll just work on the other side over there now and start fitting um, some of these bits of carpets, the bits that I can fit for now. I had to do this just as a, uh, a kind of an interlude. My brother's just bought a new car and he's just put it inside the garage and it's parked next to mine. So here are two cars from the two extremes on the spectrum. You've got mine on the left hand side which is uh, 1972, 51 years old. And then my brother's who's just bought this a uh, couple of days ago. Mercedes uh, CLA 35 AMG shooting brake and it's just funny to see the two extremes side by side look at the lines of this thing it's so sleek so aerodynamic so well put together the door gaps are like there's nothing of them practically compared to mine which is just a square box shape with huge door gaps and uh, rickety panels. The front of my one with its old fashioned headlights and no grill at the moment and no bumpers at the moment but this is raw motoring in comparison to this thing which is a tool, this really is a machine. This car flies. The interior of this is a full LED dash and with every conceivable extra that you could imagine. The interior of this is like, it's almost funny when you compare these two things. The evolution of cars in the last 50 years has been phenomenal. But both of these cars have got their own personalities and different people will love each car for a different reason. Anyway, after that short interlude, back to my jalopy. I've now put in both sides of the wheel arch covers. Um, and I think what I want to do next is to start putting some of the carpet inside here and this is one of the first panels that go down and I'll just glue that in place there for now and then this piece will go on afterwards like that it's a shame about the way they pack these things obviously I know they've got the fold them up somehow but they kind of need, do need creases in them but yeah look how good that's gonna look so as I say to begin with I'll glue this piece in here what I'll do is just make a mark I know roughly where I want to glue, just so as not to spray the glue all over the place for now. Go slightly over my mark. Give that two minutes to go tacky. That's got tacky now, so it's ready to fit. Then the next piece will be this. I 
think what I'll do, I'm going to do this in two halves of maybe quarters. I'll spray glue on this piece. Now I can unfold this. Tap it down. My idea of doing it this way is that once one side is down, I'll be able to sort of stretch it out a bit and pull out some of the uh, creases that have happened during carriage. So now I'll just fold over this side, spray glue and stick it down. So now, this is how I can pull out the creases and get it nicely stretched. Then all I've got to do is lift these flaps, spray glue them, and then get that nicely tucked in there. I've waited ages to get to this stage, and this was always going to be the part of working on this car that I was going to enjoy the most. I like the finesse the finishing off, the beautifying part. I just don't like mechanical work and I'm sick and tired of welding as well. That's not anything beautiful, but fitting a new piece of carpet is beautiful. <laughs> so I'm gonna carry on with this now for a little bit longer. And uh, the next time you'll see me is when the carpet's all fitted. <laughs>